wonder how many passports do you have? You who have one passport, please raise up your hand. You who have two passports, raise up two hands. And try to like stretch your hand. I think your body is a bit tight, so stretch, stretch your hand. Yeah, well, I see, yeah. So um, most of all have uh, one passport. I myself is a proud owner of three passports. Can you imagine that? I was born in the Soviet Union, then I lived, in, then I lived uh, uh, during 20 years in the independent states called uh, Belarus, a renowned state for best example for uh, dictatorship. And then for six years ago, I came here to Sweden. So you can imagine what my own identity is like, aren't you? It's like a complete disorder. And that's why I'm here on the stage. I think I need uh, some healing. I wonder who am I and who are these Belarusians? Nine millions of Belarusians who live in the center of Europe in this so-called uh, dictatorship. Well, actually, today, almost a third of the Belarusians feel that they are citizens of the Soviet Union, the state which no longer exists, while another third consider themselves as uh, Europeans who share European liberal values. Have you ever heard about a Swedish journalist called for Shell Albin Abrahamson here? Yeah. Okay, he wrote a book about Belarus where he stated, Belarus has basically never had a separate statehood. The country was either constantly trampled by the Lithuanian horse or crushed to death by the Russian bear or torn to pieces by the Polish eagle. It's a fact and an irony that the first long-lived Belarusian state formation was the Soviet Union. And uh, still, Belarus is very, very, very influenced by the Soviet past. Everything dealing with Belarusian identity, Belarusian language, Belarusian culture isn't not welcome in Belarus. And, I going, and I'm going to give you three short examples. Only 10% of Belarusians use the Belarusian language every day. Seven of ten Belarusians don't know any contemporary Belarusian writer. And the president, Mr. Alexander Lukashenko, seems to be one of them. Because once he said in the interview the following, well, I was brought up by the poems of Bukov. Bukov is a very renowned Belarusian writer. But the thing is that Bukov has never ever written any poems. Yeah. And the third point is that popular culture is still influenced by Russian culture and by official opinions. Uh, it means that, for example, we have uh, a black list over musicians who are not allowed to give any concerts. They, because they sing in the Belarusian language and they uh, criticize the regime. You probably feel that there is no hope for my homeland, Belarus. But luckily it is, and uh, there is a question who Belarusians are. We can just have a look at history. Uh, after World War, World War the first, uh, a delegation from, um, well, yeah, United Nations Organization, a uh, delegation from the United Nations organization came to Belarus in order to examine its borders. They met the locals and asked them, who are you? The locals answered, I am Tuteishi. And Tuteishi means I am who live at this place. And I think that this particular word, Tuteishi, I who live at this place, could have been the basement for Belarusians' identity because territorial identity welcome all kinds of people who just live at this place. 
at a particular place. So language or culture or ethnicity doesn't matter. And we can compare it with the cultural identity, uh, which focuses on a group of people who share the same language, the same ethnicity, and the same culture. So Tutesi can unite the, all the people who live on the territory of nowadays Belarus. They speak Polish, they speak Belarusian, they speak Russian, they have different ways of life. And I am pretty sure that Tutesi could also be a good solution for other people who live in the globalized world and feel, them, and feel themselves ad, as a ruthless citizen. All of us are Tutesi, and I definitely want to have this passport. Thank you.